The white one's connected to my lamp. But what the fuck is this? Wait, that's the lamp? Give me, give me fuel, give me fire. Ugh. It was this. It was this thing. That's what it was. Fuck. Shit. This thing doesn't even have input. It only does tape and radio. I already knew that. But I forgot. I have no idea how I'm gonna get this one this one to work. Oh, that's the wrong fucking thing. This is the wrong How am I supposed to make this one work? But fuck I I do I have this. Is this anything? Is that something? It's not plugged in. I wanted to make this tutorial on how to program patterns into your TV screen. And that's a little thing called music. You know, in this in this shitty kickflips videos video that I watched at the end of it, she's all like, Man, you gotta make your own local community in, in the real world. Motherfucker. I ain't in that shit. I'm not needed in that shit. I'm not needed in the real world, you get me? I think there's something to be said about the messaging there, positively, okay? I think it's important to have a community that you're close with, a close-knit community, okay? Tight-knit. Knit very tightly. But the real world, I don't like it out there, man. I just thought it's too much. There's too much, you know, it's, it's full of, you know, uh, no, my, no, no, that, no, that, no, none of that, I'm gonna keep it here, real world in my room, real world in my room, there's this sort of mythical entity called a real world community and we know what it isn't so we're pretty sure it exists right anything on here that's not the real world community but you see videos and pictures and discussion where people say they people people indicate that such a thing exists but through its fakeness we can then assume that the real world is elsewhere but even though none of us have ever seen it I haven't I don't know where it is 
people people say to touch grass, but I don't like the way it feels. So here we are. Look. Look here, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen. Babies and gen gentles. Babies and gentlemen. What's up, babies and gentlemen? I think it's all a meme. I think this idea that you can like go outside and there are there are people there that you can make friends with. Like I don't know. I'm starting to think it's all a meme. It's all a look. The only way anyone's ever made friends is when you put them in some sort of fucked up place together. And they make friends out of necessity. Um, unless you're on the internet. In which case you're already in a fucked up place together. And that's what, that's what it's all really. It's all really. You guys don't understand. Because I, oh, oh, no thank you. Oh, <laughs> that's all you ever say. You haven't explained your full thought process. Yeah, you can use your fucking brain to brain it out you stupid youtube user but anyway here i am running around like some sort of messiah when in the end i have a desire to throw my apple macintosh computer in the fire okay if you read my blog which you should, okay? Listen here, people. I have a blog, and I've been blogging a lot lately. I've been blogging a lot lately, and reading a lot of other people's blogs. Um, and I've been enjoying the process of, of writing blog posts more than I ever have in the past. And I intend to continue writing blog posts on my website. Um, and so you should, you, you might like them. You might like the blog posts, so maybe, maybe read them. If you like these videos, you might be interested in my blog posts. But I'll have no way of knowing whether you've read them or not, because my website doesn't contain any analytics, not any real ones, at least. NeoCities has some stuff built into it, but I don't really use any of it. I don't, anyway. There's no way that I could ever know whether or not you follow my RSS or Atom feeds. And that's what's so great about RSS and Atom, is that there's no way, there's no way anyone would ever know if I was outside of your house in a ghillie suit. You would never know if I was there. You would never know if I was outside of your house. So, um, that's the good thing about it. But, if you read my blog, you, you will maybe have read my most recent post in which I said something about how I'm not a fan of Apple computers, as you would imagine. Who is? Who's out here like, oh, I love Apple, you know, shells exclusively. Um, and Americans, weirdly, they're weirdly into this. I don't know what that's about. But no one's really out here like I love Apple. And that, so I, I, none of this is surprising. But I make music. Did you know that? You know I make music? Do you, you guys know I'm the 100 Gex guy? I am Dylan Brady. I am Dylan Brady. Um, so, something about what I was just talking about. Something about music. Yeah. There's two musics. There's music that's on a computer and there's music that's on a guitar. And I make those types of music. And music that's on a 
Uh, look, I don't like the fact that I'm using Apple software. I'm trying to not use it. This was not necessarily going to be a rant about that. But I really like the... I really like this thing. Fuck! This thing. This is a Behringer TD3, which is a clone of the classic Roland TR303. Um, which you will know, of course. But um, this is um, it's a piece of kit that makes bleeps and, and whatever. And it cost me £99. And I ordered it to my house. And what's nice about it is you can just plug it into a sound system. It'll make bleeps. And you don't have to fuck around with a computer. And I like that because I like stuff that's that's simple and gets out of your way. Um, and while I wouldn't necessarily call the way this, this works simple, kind of famously has a very confusing and weird input system, um, or programming system, whatever you want to call it, sequencing system, um, it does do those things. Uh, the thing is, owning one synth slash sequencer is not particularly useful. You can't really make much of a song with just one thing. It would be nice to have a machine that drums, aka a drum machine, um, to go along with it, and then sync the two via MIDI clock signals. And that way you could have a whole ass song. That's all you really need to make techno or whatever, right? Or electro. A little 303, a little, a little 808 type of 909 something. You know, people are making underground resistance is good enough for them. Good enough for underground resistance is definitely good enough for me. I'm the overground resistance, if you were wondering. Um, and uh, yeah, that would be nice. Problem is, I'm fucking broke. That's the problem there. They make it all really expensive. Like that, that's cheap, comparatively. Whenever I see someone on the internet, I, I'm on the internet, right? I'm there. And I'm also into music. I'm the, the 100 Gex guy, Dylan Brady, right? Um, and uh, I'm, I'm so I see people making music on the internet. I end up seeing that stuff, right? And some of these people, they're using this piece of equipment, which is called an OP-1 from a company called Teenage Engineering. Every time I see someone who I thought was chill use an OP-1, I immediately subtract them in my mind. They become, they become a lower class of human being to me. Because that thing, I don't like that. I don't like Teenage Engineering. I don't like them. But those things, they all cost so much money that if I see you and you have a modular synthesizer, I know, like, you know, your daddy rich. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I see you and you have a, have you have Euro rack modules, if I see you and you have, you have a, a, a collection of guitar pedals larger than, like, four, that's... That's big money you're throwing around there, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's big money you're throwing around there. Now, the best band to ever do it, Suicide, how did they make it happen? Well, they had some sort of electric piano keyboard thing on the one hand, and they had a microphone with a delay unit, which wasn't even theirs, that was just the studio that they recorded the first album in, had a delay unit. But previous set, they hadn't performed with delay on the microphone. But after recording that album, they started using delay, I think, to perform. Um, but they had they had a, a drum machine. They had, they had some sort of uh, guitar pedals, uh, distortion pedals, fuzz pedals to throw the everything, but, but to throw the, the electric keyboard through. 
But when you look at them performing, I see I see these motherfuckers with a prophet seven. I've seen pictures of suicide on stage with a with a prophet seven. That's an expensive ass keyboard. How are they how are they managing that? I don't know. I don't know how they were doing that. But that was later. That's not when they OG'd. That's not when they OG'd. I don't know what they were doing when they OG'd. But the purest since the cheap since I already own computers, I should just use computers, right? Rather than spend a bunch of money on some shit to do computers but worse. I should just use computers, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know. You know what a com- you know. You you've been here before. You've used a computer. You're using one right now. So that's something interesting. I hope. Um and maybe I'm just getting I guess this is all coming round to the truth of the matter. Which is which is which is which is I've been using the software Logic Pro to make music for a long time at this point. I'm very good at this software. I'm very good at it. It's one of the few things where I can actively claim I'm actually pretty good. And uh, I suppose I want to change your pace. And that's really what it's all about, when you think about it. I want to both expand my my palette of music-making machines on the one hand. I want to expand. But I want to expand to subtract. Because I'm a strong believer in the idea that creativity comes from limitations. And having a limited... The thing about a DAW, full featured DAW like Logic, is hypothetically you can do pretty much anything. Now, in reality, even if you can do pretty much anything, the format of the software pushes you towards a certain type of music. And it's a two way street whereby certain aspects of the software encourage people to make certain types of music. And then the creators of of music software try and update their software or create new software that enhances the ability to make what people are making, you know. Um, So it's a two-way street there, but the point is, it's very, very easy to make um, music that sounds like other people's music. I don't even know if I care about this. I don't know what music is anymore. I'm just kind of looking around, trying to find a little, you know, trying to find something that will make me go, wow, that's some crazy noises. It's interesting, isn't it, all of this stuff? But I'm, I'm hoping that... I don't know. I wonder. I wonder what's, what's going to be, be next. I, I kind of want it to be brain damage. 
Anyway, um, this section of the video is called um, and the reason it's called that is because I don't, although I technically have that, but something that initially, I suppose you could say, put me off about blogging is that nobody reads well, nobody reads, but no, especially nobody reads blogs anymore, right? That's the meme. Nobody reads blogs anymore. That's the, that's the idea. Of course, that's not true. Lots of people still read blogs. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, I have no way of knowing who's read anything that I've written. Um, and so especially once you're on alternative platforms like GoFu and Gemini, uh, you, you know, you have no real way of knowing if anyone's reading your stuff. Um, it's kind of like a message in a bottle, right? You sort of put your stuff out there and, you know, you, you don't know if anyone's read it or not. Uh, and this is a sort of particular style of posting that it takes some getting used to. It's a little odd. It's a little strange if you're not used to. If you're used to the instant feedback mechanisms of social media, hey, here's a like, here's a comment, here's a retweet, here's a whatever the hell else, right? If you're used to that, it can be a bit um, strange not having that anymore, right? And... That's why in the past I had kind of barely used my blog, even though it's existed for a long time, because I always thought, well, if I like, it's better to have feedback. It's nice to have, it's nice to have um, that little dopamine hit where someone tells me, you know, hey, this video got this many views, this post got this many likes, instantly trigger my reward systems. But now that I've gone without that for a while and made a few blog posts where I'm quite happy with it. And I've, I, I, I actually feel like um, I, a weight has been lifted off my shoulders now. Somehow the opposite of what I was feeling before with my blog. Some sort of switch has flipped in my brain. And now I feel very happy about the fact that I can post something and then it's just posted. I never have to think about it again. I never get a notification on my phone you know, it's just, it's, I did the thing and it's completed now. And no one, you know, I, I, I have no idea what people's reactions to it are. And that's good because I don't want to know. Um, it's, it's something that at first, it was a little bit to get used to. Um, but, but now that I have experienced that and I'm, and I'm, I'm now used to that, I'm now used to that. It's kind of nice. Uh, I think one way in which social media platforms these days try to entice you to use them is by, by bribing you with the idea that, uh, you know, one day you'll be able to make money off of this because everyone's broke, right? And uh, they're basically just enticing you by saying like, oh, no, 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 You're never, no one will read your blog, you know, you can't make that into a career. But here, you know, on TikTok, we'll pay you. On Twitter, we'll pay you, right? Um, and it's like, actually, firstly, you you won't get paid. Like, first of all, you're never going to make any real money off of these places, just statistically speaking. Um, secondly, you will definitely compromise your vision in order to try and make money, which sucks. Um, and thirdly, even if you do make money, uh, it's actually a shitty job. <laughs> you don't, you don't actually want it. You think, you might think, uh, and you probably don't, you guys are sensible, but a lot of people think they want to be a professional YouTuber or something. It's a shitty job. You don't, you don't want to be that. It's a lot of hard work. You know, editing is a lot of work, for example, writing videos, etc. There are easier ways to do it. But those easier ways require 
there are even even fewer people who you know what I'm saying. I don't know how to explain this to you. Um, <clears throat> you know, that's about that's about where that's coming from. But I don't want one thousand follower. I don't. I don't. Um, there's someone. I don't remember why I saw this, but someone once described the small, the small web, the small internet, whatever, small web, as a um, something like a community of people making posts for each other and no one else. And I really like that. I really like the the low edition of the and no one else um, there. Because one one thing that is interesting about small web communities is that they, you know. I don't, know, I don't know if I want to talk about this, actually. Okay, I'm going to try and talk around it, because this kind of seems like a boring topic. But I like the concept of just, hey, this is a thing that's for the guys who get it. This is a thing for the people that get it, and the people that don't get it are never going to see it, right? And uh, so you don't have to worry about them. And that's, I like that. I like that aspect of it. I like that aspect of, of all of this stuff. And I dislike that aspect. I dislike the opposite of that aspect being the case on algorithmic platforms like YouTube, um, where randos end up on your videos. Uh, then again, we've all been randos at some point, but that's fine. You start off as a rando. The problem is when you stay a rando forever, 